Well, hi there. I'm here today with Snake because we are about to talk about five of the best pet snakes you could possibly get. As you know, in our earlier video, five of the best pet reptiles you could possibly get for a beginner, we talked about two types of snakes. We talked about ball pythons and corn snakes, and they are fantastic pet snakes for anybody. We stand by them. But today, we wanted to talk to those of you who maybe already have a corn snake, or already have a ball python, or just thought, I would like a snake, but those two aren't for me. I want to talk about some of the other options that are out there. Some of the other greatest snakes you could possibly own. First on our list is one of my very favorite snakes in the whole wide world. Of course, this whole list is made up of snakes that are my favorite snakes in the whole wide world. But this is a western hognose snake, and I want to talk about hognose snakes in general because they could easily be the greatest pet snake on planet Earth. Let's talk about the pros first. Let's begin with the fact that they are a really great size. This is a female western hognose snake. She's not quite as big as a female can get, but this is a pretty good sized hognose snake. You will never find a male western hognose snake this big. That is really nice. It's, it's very manageable. The enclosure that they're going to need is a very reasonable size as a result of the fact that they're a very reasonable size. Yet they're still kind of heavy bodied and easy to handle. Love that. I don't really love it when snakes strike. I don't like anything that moves suddenly and startles me. So feeding my snakes is always kind of a stressful event for me. Hognose snakes have the calmest feeding response. They're goofballs. They love to eat, but they usually just come up and then they start swallowing things. They don't really strike at it. They just go and just swallow it down. I love that because it's a little bit less stressful for me to feed a hognose snake than any other snake I have. I also love how calm they are with handling. They are really just fantastic. They're not a zippy snake. They don't dart around even though they're not a very big snake. They kind of act like a lot of big snakes where they will hang out with you. They're very unlikely to bite. That's a good thing because they are a venomous snake. But biting does not tend to be the defense that they use most readily. They'll strike at you sometimes, but they usually do it with their mouth closed and they just poke you with their goofy nose. I love the way hognose snakes look. It actually took me a long time to start to appreciate the look of a hognose snake. At first I thought that is just the silliest looking snake I've ever seen. But after a while, silly grows on you. No reptile is perfect for everyone, and so there are some cons even to the wonderful hognose snake. And one of the cons is that they are venomous. Like I said, it's not usually a problem for you. The fangs are in the back of their mouth, so usually you'd have to let them chew on you for a little bit. And even if you got envenomated, unless you had an allergic reaction, it's not going to be worse than a bee sting or something like that. The problem with them being venomous is that people sometimes pass... Uh, various laws and things making it illegal to have venomous snakes. If you get one that's caught out of the wild, it can be difficult to get them to feed on rodents. If you get one that is captive bred and raised on rodents, usually they eat rodents just fine, but that's not true for all species of hognose snakes. Some of them are going to want to eat amphibians, especially toads, so you better have a supply of toads. And toads can be a little bit harder to get, than, say, frozen mice. They're also a little bit on the small side. I said that was a pro, and it definitely is a pro. I love the size of hognose snakes, but at the same time, they're a little bit more susceptible to getting hurt. If they get out of their enclosure, they could be a lot harder to find than a bigger snake. And so the smallness is a pro and a con. I'm sure there are exceptions, but all the Western hognose snakes I've ever had have gone through a little grumpy phase where they hiss and could do little mock strikes at you every time they see you go by, and that seems to last a couple months, and then they're like, oh, okay, I'll just be the coolest snake in the world now. I love them. Hognose snake, easily one of the best snakes you could ever own. Next on our list is a group of snakes that was actually requested quite a lot when we first released our video on the top five reptiles for beginners, and those are king snakes, like this black Mexican king snake, like California king snakes, like milk snakes, these snakes are actually fantastic pet reptiles, and there are some reasons that they didn't make our original list, but that doesn't mean that they're not just absolutely fantastic. And we want to talk to you a little bit about the pros and cons of king snakes. Like this, my Pueblin milk snake, and I gotta start out by telling you, he's not normally pink. He's an apricot phase Pueblin milk snake, so normally he is bright red, 
and yellow with these black bands and glorious. But right now, he's in blue, which means he's getting ready to shed. For starters, they're a really excellent size. This one is a relatively normal sized king snake. Some species get a little bit bigger than this, some a little bit smaller, but this is about what you would expect from an adult king snake. And that's a very moderate size, very reasonable, yet big enough that they're pretty fun to interact with. They're also very easy to care for, a lot like a, a corn snake, really. Like I said, they love to eat. So they will eat all kinds of things. In the wild, they're gonna be eating a lot of reptiles, including other snakes, which is something to be aware of. You never want to keep these with another snake because you will have problems. But generally speaking, in captivity, they feed very, very well on mice and so that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. They're also, as you can tell just from seeing me handle him, they're very, very active in their enclosures. They like to explore, and that's really fun. Not all snakes are like that. Some snakes just basically sit like this all day long, every day. When you have a king snake or a milk snake, those snakes are gonna be exploring a lot. Very fun to watch. Cons, uh, in general, they're not that great for handling. They're a lot flightier. It's very rare that you'll get one to hold still, like this one is holding still right now. Generally, they're moving around a lot. He is honestly the only milk snake I've ever handled that wasn't just trying to get to the ground all the time. It's like they're just trying to drop out of your hands and you're only getting in their way. Also, they're a lot bitier than any of the other snakes on our list. A lot more likely to bite you. The bite is never gonna be severe, but it can draw a little bit of blood. I have been bitten by this snake and I've only been bitten by two snakes in my entire life because generally speaking I know how to avoid it. The problem is these guys they just want to eat and if you smell kind of like food they're going to try to eat you so it's not a defensive biting. I know how to avoid getting bitten by a defensive snake. This is a snake that's trying to eat my hand. That's harder to avoid. If you don't mind a snake that's a little bit wigglier to handle and a little bit more likely to bite you, hard to find one better than king snakes. Next on my list is one of the most underappreciated snakes in all of snakedom, and that is the garter snake. I think garter snakes are underappreciated because they are so common. You see garter snakes all over the place, wherever your hometown is, and so it's really easy to just look right past them. But you should not look past garter snakes because they're absolutely one of the best pet snakes you could possibly have. Let's talk about the pros, the amazing things about garter snakes. Garter snakes are beautiful. There are many different species of garter snakes, but in general, they are some of the prettiest snakes you're ever gonna see in your whole life. Don't underappreciate them, they're glorious. Like this snake here, this is a California red-sided garter snake, got to be one of the prettiest snakes in the world amazing. They're also snakes that get out and they explore. That's why you see them by your house so often. That's why they seem so common. It's not really that there are loads more of them than there are of other kinds of snakes. It's that they're out and they're exploring. And if you have a pet garter snake, you're going to see it a lot and it's going to be out and doing things like other pet lizards and not so much like other pet snakes. They also have a really incredible and fun feeding response. Garter snakes like to eat and one of the things that they like to eat the most, which is another pro about them, are things like worms and fish. You don't have to feed rodents to a garter snake and that's really neat. And when you do feed them things like fish, the way that they go fishing is so fun because you can put fish in their little water bowl and they'll go around with their mouth open and they're just going back and forth and they're so eager to feed and that is a blast. As always, they're not perfect. There are some cons to keeping garter snakes. First of all, they're not as easy to handle as a lot of other snakes. They can be much quicker and much dartier than other species of snakes. I've actually been holding this one for a while and now it's pretty calm. They are darty little creatures and so they're a little bit harder to handle than many other snakes. And this will vary by the species, but some garter snakes are actually mildly venomous. They, they produce a little bit of venom that's mixed in their saliva and so I've heard, I've never had experience with this myself, but I've heard that the bites of some species of garter snakes can be rather painful and cause a little bit of localized swelling. Not a big deal, but something to be aware of. Despite being very common, they're actually very rarely bred in captivity. And that's a shame. And, and a lot of the reason for that is because they're so overlooked by the reptile community. People don't realize what amazing snakes these are. So finding a good breeder can be difficult. This snake actually comes to us from Don's Garter Snakes. And he's a great reptile breeder. So there are 
great breeders of garter snakes out there. You can buy, for one thing, a garter snake that's not so common because it's captive bred, it's gonna make a better pet, and you're gonna be supporting some really awesome reptile breeders. The other thing that can be a little bit tough about a garter snake is just that the feeders for them can be, potentially, depending on where you are and what's available to you, harder to find. Because goldfish are usually not the best fish feeder to use, so, you know, if you have a bait shop or something near your house, then you've got access to all kinds of worms, all kinds of fish, and garter snakes are going to be really easy to keep. Another con is that, especially wild-caught individuals, they can musk on you, which means they, they open up their vent and they let out kind of a stinky discharge so it'll almost like a skunk, and they'll, they'll smear it on you, which is gross, and it, you'll smell for a while even when you wash your hands. Not a problem usually when you get a captive bred individual. And even, even a wild caught garter snake, once it's used to handling, it won't do that anymore. But right at first, I'm actually more careful picking up garter snakes than I am with about any other kind of snake because you got to watch both ends. Garter snakes, you got to love them. Next on our list is another snake that a lot of people called for on our top five reptiles for beginning keepers, and that is the BCI, or common boa. I gotta tell you, I don't know of a snake on the planet that is more enjoyable than a common boa. I can see absolutely why somebody would think this is the best pet reptile, period, because they are amazing. One of the things that I love about them, one of the big pros, is their impressive size. These snakes are big enough that they can give you a hug, that's a little bit different than any of the other snakes we're talking about on this list. They wrap around you. They almost handle you. They're about as big, actually, as a snake can be without being dangerous. They're also notoriously excellent feeders. They like food. And that's a very good thing, because that was one of the big cons of ball pythons, not something you tend to run into with BCIs. As with everything, they are not perfect. One of the things that is very imperfect about them is they are going to be the most expensive to house and the most expensive to feed, and that's just a result of the fact that they're the biggest. So their enclosure needs to be similar to other snake enclosures, but bigger, everything bigger, and the food that they eat is bigger and therefore generally more expensive. Their bite is also going to be, as a result of being the biggest snake on this list, more severe than the bite of any other snake on this list, and that's just a result of the fact that they've got big mouths and big teeth, and you're going to bleed pretty profusely, and then you're going to be fine. In general, the only downside, and the only reason that they weren't on our list of the top five snakes for beginners is just that they are big. That, I think, is a big time pro for them because they're big without being too big, but they are big enough that it is a real consideration, and it might be a deal breaker for some of you, the BCI possibly the greatest pet snake, pet reptile, on planet Earth. Last on our list of five of the greatest pet snakes you could possibly own is one of the weirdest pet snakes you could possibly own, and that is the sand boa. This here is a Kenyan sand boa, and they are funny snakes. I told you before that the hognose snake has a funny face, and it took me a long time to get used to it and grow to love it. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. The sand boa is still a weird looking snake to me. I look at a sand boa, I go, what is going on there? And that face has a purpose. These snakes spend most of their time buried under the substrate, under sand or, or other loose substrates with just those eyes poking up and then they just pop up and grab anything that runs by. So let's start with the pros. They're bizarre. And anybody who sees one is gonna go, what the heck is going on with that snake? Love that. They're also beautiful. If you get a good look at this snake, these this is what they look like in the wild. This is a normal Kenyan sand boa. They've got all kinds of blacks and oranges, but there are all sorts of morphs available of them as well. Incredibly gorgeous snakes. They also have a very excellent size. They're really similar in size to hognose snakes. This one here is a very large male. Kenyan sand boas, and he's about the same size as a large male western hognose snake. Females get considerably larger, several times as large in weight as a male, just like female hognose snakes. And so if you want a sand boa that stays a little bit smaller, you can get a male. If you want a sand boa that gets a little bit bigger, get a female, and that's awesome. 
Also, they're fairly easy to house, just like hognose snakes, because they're a very moderately sized snake. The enclosure that you need for them is very moderately sized compared to any other snakes we've talked about. As with everything, they're not perfect. They do have some cons. They are more likely to bite you than many other snakes. I wouldn't say more likely than the king snakes that we talked about before, but they are somewhat likely to bite you, and the way that they go about biting you is really funny, and that's why I'm being a little bit extra careful with this snake versus some of the other snakes I've been around today. They don't strike in a conventional manner. They don't rear back and stare at you. They just sort of whip their head off to the side and grab you, and that's a little bit harder for me to predict than other snakes. The other issue with them is the fact that they do like to bury themselves, so except for maybe their eyes and the tip of their nose, you might not see any more of your sand boa in your enclosure. And if you want a snake that's good to observe, the sand boa is probably not for you. But if you want a snake that you can pull out and go, what am I even looking at here? The sand boa is for you. And I want to just say one thing about our list, which is that just like the lizards, this isn't necessarily the five greatest snakes you could ever own, but five of the greatest. If the, your favorite snake wasn't on this list, don't give up hope, because there's a very good chance it'll be on a future list. These five snakes that we've talked about today are all spectacular pet snakes. If, if you think it's the right snake for you, do your homework, get ready for it, but you are going to love that pet snake. Snakes in general are incredible, and these five are five of the best you could possibly get. We will have more videos on these guys soon. As always, like and subscribe, that way you'll know exactly when those videos come out, and we hope to see you real soon. But oh, these yeah. Guys. These guys do. They're smooth up here. Ooh. El boa constrictor emperador. <laughs> Eso se llama. I got pick of the litter, and so I, I got to pick out any one I wanted, uh, and I found one that had a glorious tail, just beautiful, and one of them that had really nice red saddles, and I loved both of them. I didn't know which one to get, and I pulled them out, and it was the same snake. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>